Barbara Streisand and the notorious director James Brolin, one of the most coveted couples in show business, thanks to their nearly century-long careers and decades-long romance. They have maintained their love unwavering, quelled accusations of adultery, and kept their relationship low-key and out of the spotlight for many years. Their marriage was odd and peculiar, and others wondered why when facts of their connection became public. Stay tuned, because everything you ever wanted to know about the strange history of Barbara and James's marriage is right here. The most sought-after couple. Once they came out as a couple, James and Barbara instantly became the most sought-after pair in Hollywood. At the time, Barbara had just won three major awards, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Golden Globe, and was enjoying the height of her career. James wasn't far behind either, having directed several critically acclaimed films. Because of this, people were overjoyed when news of their relationship broke and even began calling them couple goals. The modest couple was viewed as the ideal pair, and their accomplishments seemed to be icing on the cake. But when the specifics of their peculiar first encounter surfaced, doubts started to creep in. The ex-wife of Barbara's ex-live-in boyfriend, producer John Peters, allegedly hooked them up at a dinner party where they met. We were under the impression that it was a mouthful, and Barbara was too. It was almost that night that she didn't meet James, she said afterwards, because the oddity of their arrangement was so obvious. This was revealed during her appearance on The Tonight Show, when she also confessed to being so embarrassed by their blind date that she bolted from the party as soon as she arrived. Instead of meeting James, she opted to play downstairs with the other guests' children until it was time for them to sit down at the dinner. James didn't resemble Barbara's expectations in the least, which only made matters worse. She predicted that James would be the stereotypically rugged, bearded mountain man in an interview with W Magazine. On the contrary, James's shaved beard and hairless head greeted her. She was so taken aback that she had to ask him who had messed with his hair after placing a hand on his head. However, James felt differently. What won him over was her real care and her courage to touch his head and ask a question like that. It was just a love at first sight moment, he knew deep inside. Barbara revealed in retrospect that James's instant attraction to her stemmed from the fact that she never sugarcoated anything and always told him the truth. Despite the fact that she was single, Barbara nonetheless took James out on a date after the party, and they went on their first official date on July 1st, 1996. They were so close to sharing their first kiss because of how wonderfully it went. Following the conclusion of their date, they conversed by phone till three in the morning. Their unforgettable first date didn't last long enough to develop into anything more. James was sent to Ireland to direct his political drama, My Brother's War, which ended their romantic involvement prematurely. That wasn't going to stop them, though. According to Barbara's interview with People magazine, she even dozed off on the bathroom floor while holding her phone to her ear because they talked so much while he was away. During this period, she was also busy with the production, direction, and starring in her own film, The Mirror Has Two Faces. Barbara discussed the balancing act of their growing romance and her tasking profession in an interview with the Los Angeles Times. She couldn't meet James during filming, so they had to wait until she finished the film before they could meet at her place for editing. James soon after moved in with her, leaving behind his two-bedroom condo. They were allegedly seen together several times at this point, which is when rumors about their romance started to circulate. Since she was hopeless in the kitchen, James was able to win her heart with his culinary prowess at this period. She said that only made him more attractive, particularly after he made her favorite sushi for dinner. Despite he tripped first, she tripped harder, and they ultimately chose to come clean about their relationship. The pair then made their first appearance together on the red carpet at the Ziegfeld Theater's New York City premiere of The Mirror Has Two Faces. Standing side by side, they wore identical black clothes. Their unusual romance and the compelling tale behind it propelled them to the status of one of the most famous couples, much to the chagrin of their detractors. It seemed like Barbara and James were enjoying all the attention they were getting, maybe because they were still early in their relationship, because they showed up together again at another red carpet event not long after that. With so many nominations for Barbara's film The Mirror Has Two Faces, 
This time it was for the 1997 Oscars. James was there to see it all, even when Celine Dion sang a cover of her song, I Finally Found Someone. Barbara was also there. The couple's decision to spend their lives together was shaped by this moment. Therefore, their nuptials a few years later were not unexpected. James and Barbara tied the knot. Only two years after realizing they were perfect for each other, James confessed he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Barbara, and the couple tied the knot. All eyes were on them now that their incredible romance had evolved into the long-awaited marriage vows. However, due to the couple's united decision to make the wedding small and intimate, not many guests were able to attend. Since they preferred to be among the people they had loved for a long time, they decided to invite just extremely close friends. Their gradual withdrawal from the limelight for some time meant that this choice wasn't made on the spur of the moment. Nobody was surprised when they announced their secret wedding because their frequent outside outings and red carpet appearances together gradually diminished. The focus instead shifted to the location of this enchanted wedding, as fans and supporters eagerly speculated. To get away from the chopper hounds, some said the couple may elope to Tahiti, while others said they'd get married on a marine post. The couple's decision to exchange vows in the privacy of their own home, though, caught everyone off guard. Due to the couple's desire for solitude, preparations began in early June with five hours of discussion about logistics, security, and confidentiality between the couple's managers and caterer, Mary Micucci. Following that, Barbara took the lead in selecting the details of her ideal wedding. She adorned the fruitwood ballroom chairs with matching napkins, old damask tablecloths in a white color, and seat coverings in the same pattern. She used the Sèvres porcelain plates with the big French silver cutlery to finish off the motif. According to Mary, the caterer who spoke with People magazine, Barbara maintained her composure and positivity all through the preparation. The customary bridal worry didn't set in until just days before the marriage. Still, they persisted with the preparations, and the big day arrived all too soon. On the lawn overlooking the beach at Barbara's house stood a 2,800-square-foot ivory voil tent. The bride walked down a staircase adorned with 750 roses, a symbol of the floral theme that pervaded the ceremony. A hundred candles and fifty pink water lilies floated aimlessly in the pool, while pink miniature rosebuds adorned the tables. Barbara looked like something out of a dream, according to her close friend Joanne Siegel, who characterized the wedding as a celestial affair. The most memorable part, in her opinion, was when Barbara, who was terrified of performing on stage, conquered her fear and sang two love songs to her future husband. And her groom was very ecstatic. After marrying Barbara, he was so worried that he would squander their time together that he seldom slept, he revealed in an interview. He looked forward to seeing his bride each morning because each day was an adventure. Their wedding was absolutely perfect, but only close friends and family were invited via secret phone calls, so the press didn't get a chance to see it. To be extra cautious, Barbara had her florist, David Mark, make a scrim of amaranthus and roses to cover the picture window in the living room and ward off any nosy photographers. The wedding's music was also included. Barbara reportedly drowned away the press's ability to hear their private vows by blasting loud jungle noises and bad rock and roll music outside their tent, according to the New York Daily News. John Travolta, a close friend of Barbara's, was one of the attendees, so word of mouth was the only way to obtain the scoop. One of the initial invitees, John, told People magazine about the nuptials. There were 105 guests in attendance, including him and other famous faces like Karen, Tom Hanks, Wilson, Quincy Jones, Diane Kind, and Sidney Pollack. John and his wife were moved to tears by the heartfelt vows they exchanged. He agreed with Siegel that it was the most picturesque wedding he had ever been to. The couple's honeymoon, which took place at Santa Barbara's Channel Islands shortly after the wedding, was the cherry on top of the stunning ceremony. Barbara's previous relationships and marriages. No one, not even Barbara herself, had ever imagined her wedding would be so spectacular. According to an interview Barbara gave to people two years ago, she really considered never getting married. 
She said she was finally okay with it and was starting to enjoy her time alone. In fact, James told Gail King on CBS Sunday morning that he asked Barbara to marry him three times before she finally accepted. She was initially hesitant, he added, and it was the spark that ignited their two-year romance. No one expected Barbara to get married considering her past relationships. A lot of her relationships in the past had been short-lived affairs, casual hookups, or long-term commitments. She hadn't seen marriage as the final destination after being involved with numerous men. Richard Baskin, her ex-boyfriend and the heir of Baskin Ice Cream, was among those who were taken aback. Receiving an invitation to Barbara's covert wedding just added to his shock. When Richard was a budding musician in 1983, the two crossed paths. His connection with Barbara evolved from a professional and creative partnership into a passionate love affair. His production and composition credits include numerous tracks on her 1984 album, Emotion, and two additional tracks on her 1985 album, The Broadway Album. Throughout their relationship, Richard went out of his way to make sure that Barbara had opportunities to shine. He even went to great lengths to get her featured in the 1987 picture Nuts, which was based on a play that Barbara had always wanted to star in. That year, not long after Nuts premiered, Barbara ended their relationship, regardless of how far he was prepared to go for her. It was later in their relationship that she allegedly dumped him for Don Johnson, someone else she fell in love with. Their odd connection came to fruition due to the fact that producer Don was an enticing heartbreaker. According to her interview with Ladies Home Journal, Barbara was completely on board with it. His film Miami Vice featured her in a cameo role as well. She and Don had a brief romance, just like Richard's. All of these brief relationships, though, began with her eight-year marriage to Elliot Gould, her longest romance. During the 1960s, their romance was huge in Hollywood. Their on-screen chemistry only served to heighten the public's adoration for the two celebrities. They crossed paths for the first time in 1962 during her audition for the Broadway production of I Can Get It For You Wholesale. Barbara was originally supposed to star opposite Elliot Gould, who had already been cast in the starring role. Elliot recalled her from her previous audition and gave her a call after she announced her number. Their charming first encounter blossomed into a tender love story after Barbara was cast as the show's female lead. The couple tied the knot the year after their courtship ended. Elliot said it was the happiest time of their lives, even though they were still thriving in the industry. In an interview with The Independent, he recalled that his favorite times spent with Barbara were in their downtown one-bedroom flat. Their marriage was short-lived, though, since their careers took off shortly after. Elliot was Barbara's right-hand man as she rose to fame. However, he was unfairly dubbed Mr. Streisand by the press. That quickly became an issue, and their marriage began to crumble following the birth of their son, Jason Gould. They went their separate ways in 1969 and finally got a divorce in 1971, and conflict was the cause. Because of Barbara's fame, Elliot was given a moniker by the media. They were both on equal ground at the beginning, but Barbara quickly gained more popularity and traction. He was already in a bad spot when Barbara's Tony nomination for I Can Get It For You Wholesale, the musical in which they both appeared, made things much worse. Unfortunately, her marriage ended prematurely due to the abundance of employment opportunities that came with her celebrity. They drifted apart, according to Elliot's interview with CBS Sunday Morning, because Barbara took precedence over their family. He went on to say that he couldn't bear to be in Barbara's shadow because she was already committed to her career. Even though they were legally separated, Elliot insisted he was glad for their son and harbored no ill will towards his ex. In any case, it appears he lied. Following their split, revelations about yet another of Barbara's relationships emerged, and they were shocking. Funny Girl co-star Omar Sharif was purportedly her lover. Several interviews later, Omar acknowledged their connection, explaining that he liked Barbara so much because she was insane. On her behalf, he claimed to be prepared to convert to Judaism and relocate to New York. The fact that Barbara was still married made their romance all the more illicit. They encountered stiff resistance as word of their affair spread. Even if their films were prohibited in several foreign theaters, 
the opposition managed to pass them on. Furthermore, it was reported by the Los Angeles Times that their on-screen kiss nearly resulted in Omar losing his Egyptian citizenship. After they broke up, Barbara took a long hiatus before reuniting with John Peters, her second long-term lover, in 1973. John was Barbara's buddy and lover after he made her wigs. He was a budding actor who, with Barbara's guidance, became a star in no time. This was his first feature film producing credit, and he got his role in A Star is Born because of her. In addition to winning Grammys and Oscars, the film had a successful commercial distribution, making it a huge hit. He thanked Barbara for his success and said the part altered his life in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Despite the relationship's instability, that was the one tender moment between them. They were together for over 10 years till they broke up in 1983. Barbara told people that she and John broke up because she, like Elliot, started to ignore John after landing a directing job on the film Yentl. She dated Pierre Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, for a year after she became famous, and she has been in relationships with numerous prominent figures since then. Ryan O'Neill, who co-starred with her on What's Up, Doc, was another person she dated for a while. She claimed him the second she laid eyes on him. She was also associated with Warren Beatty at the time, who claimed to have had a handsy encounter with Barbara in the back seat of a car. For Barbara, though, it was just pals. James' multiple marriages and relationships. In July of 1996, he went on his first date with Barbara after only a year of being divorced. James was wed to Jan Smithers, an actress famous for her role as Bailey Quarters on the CBS sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati from 1988 to 1995. When Jan made her first guest appearance on the ABC soap opera Hotel in March of 1984, rumors began circulating that their relationship originated there. Unfortunately, they had a rocky relationship. When James met Smithers, he was still married to Jane Cameron Agee, his first wife. This meant that he was involved in some form of entanglement. They broke up soon after he met Jan, but they never actually divorced. Despite this, James proceeded to wed Jan in an unlicensed ceremony in Canada. The children of his and Jane's marriage were hurt by the turmoil between them, and their marriage had not yet officially ended. Reportedly, Josh, who is James's son, had a rough time with his onset tutor while taking lessons for the Goonies. When Jane began making claims of bigamy, the situation became even more explosive. However, James showed no remorse and proceeded to marry Jan, becoming pregnant with her. James soon had a daughter, Molly. Their marriage lasted nine years, which was three years less than his previous marriage to Jane Agee, which lasted 18 years. James said in an interview that he remained single for three years following his second divorce because he didn't want to go into another bad scenario. He ended up in Barbara because of that choice. In every way, from their past relationships to their personalities, these two are inseparable. They are in agreement that their personal life should remain private. Since their wedding, the newlyweds have gone to great lengths to avoid the spotlight whenever possible, particularly when they are out in public. For their date evenings, James and his wife avoided going to prominent venues or restaurants in 2020, according to Parade magazine, so they could escape the media. He said they were rodents and that they trailed behind them frequently. Going to unpleasant places was their only option. But that isn't the pair's sole peculiarity. In the same year, Barbara published My Passion for Design, a book in which she disclosed that their Malibu mansion had a non-bare subterranean mall. There is an antique doll business, a frozen yogurt kiosk, and a vintage garment shop all in one mall. The entire point of the mall, she said in a 2010 interview with Harper's Bazaar, was to have a street of stores where she could show off her wares rather than bury them in a basement. She often invites special people to her home, albeit she keeps this a secret. Lady Gaga, the music singer, and Ryan Murphy, the creator of Glee, were invited to her underground mall during a celebrity dinner party at her house. In 2015, Ryan revealed to Vulture magazine that they were accommodated by Barbara when she requested that they visit her mall. Their hour-long stay in the basement was a lot of fun. Ryan also remembered that she brought out her 
Hello Dolly and Funny Girl gown collection and displayed them to them. It seems that Barbara's infatuation with her dog Samantha was even more bizarre than her preoccupation with her underground mall. She and James stopped trying to conceive while married because they already had a family. Samantha, Barbara's puppy, was actually born to the couple, so it came as a shock to them when she passed away. Nonetheless, they held on. Two of the puppies were clones from Samantha, her late dog, and the other two were Coton de Tuliers. After spending 14 years with Samantha, she found it difficult to let go of her grief over her death, which drove her to clone the other two dogs, as she said in an interview with the New York Times. That did little to alleviate her suffering, though, for she still missed Samantha. Still, she was thankful for her family and life in general, and she was content knowing that her puppies resembled her. The dynamic of their relationship now. Their remarkable dynamic and mutual understanding are the reasons their partnership has endured for so long. Despite the COVID-19 epidemic, they were able to celebrate their 22nd wedding anniversary and 24th year of marriage. With the most heartwarming comment, Barbara shared a vintage Instagram snapshot of the two of them on their wedding day. She expressed her disbelief that 24 years had flown by so quickly and expressed her preference for incarceration beside him. James made a virtual appearance on the talk and said that the couple's marriage had benefited greatly from the lockdown procedures. He said that the 15 months they spent stuck together only served to deepen their bond and caused them to fall in love more frequently. James also told 8ARP magazine that he hoped the two of them will collaborate on a project soon. He expressed optimism about the possibility of their collaboration, citing his roles as an actor and hers as a director. It seems she had her heart set on directing the two movies they were considering, and he was totally cool with it. Their incredible bond and lovely family dynamic have stunned onlookers with their heartwarming tale and joyful announcement of the happiness and joy in their family. What do you think about Barbara and James Brolin's marriage? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also be sure to smash that like button, share and subscribe for more videos like this.